We are going to talk about two problems now, uh, about channel assignment and subgraph isomorphism. And uh, we are going to show some common techniques that can be used in order to show uh, lower bounds for those two. So let us start from the classical graph coloring problem. We have a graph and we want to color its uh, vertices in such a way that if we have an edge, then the colors of both two endpoints need to be different. We can understand this problem in such a way that on every edge we have a number one. And this number one stands for the minimum allowed difference uh, of the colors of the endpoints. So now we can generalize it. The generalized version is a channel assignment problem. And uh, we have, for example, if we have number five, then the difference of the colors of the endpoints needs to be at least five. It can be, it can be more, but at least five. So um, the formal definition is that we have a graph, we have a white function, and we are looking for a proper assignment that is uh, an assignment that satisfies uh, all, the, all the constraints on, of, the, of the edges. Uh, and also has a minimum span of colors. Note that we can have uh, gaps, I mean the colors that we are not using inside, but the, the total span uh, needs to be less possible. So uh, if we have such a problem, um, then it is motivated by, by radio emitters and interfer interferences between those. And in fact, a few days be before uh, this workshop, a friend of mine asked me about this problem because he has something like this with his uh, Wi-Fi emitters. And uh, so, so this problem, in fact, occurs in, 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 the, in the real world. And unfortunately, I had bad news for him because um, the best known algorithm is uh, brute force that uh, is checking all the, well, maybe not, not a brute force, but an al algorithm that checks all the, um, all the permutations of those vertices. Uh, and there's nothing better, unfortunately. Although for, um, for L-bounded version, where L is um, a bound for the weight on the edges, uh, there was some race of uh, dynamic programming algorithms, and maybe something will be in the future. We do not know whether our lower bounds for those are tight or not. So uh, the channel assignment problem is a part of a larger CSP problems hierarchy, and we, at the moment, we know pretty much about the complexities in this hierarchy. Let us focus on the channel assignment lower bounds. We have, we have a tight lower bound for it, which comes from this chain of, of reductions. The interesting part, the most interesting part, is in the middle here, because here we are compressing the size of, of the instance from a linear to a sublinear. Let us take a look how exactly we are, we are compressing. What is an idea behind this compression? We are encoding uh, information inside permutations. Let us assume that we have three permutations like this. And each one of those permutations is encoding some part of, of the information. And we want to merge those three into a new permutation in such a way that um, all, the, all the information from, the, from this left part is still preserved in the right picture. And uh, during the merge, we will introduce some new pieces of, of information to this. So let us uh, look at the second coordinate of the right picture. And note that um, the second coordinate here is exactly the same as the second coordinate here. So the, we are using the second coordinate to preserve the information from the, from the left picture. It is enough. Uh, all, the, all the information is preserved. So we can use uh, the first coordinate in, uh, in any way we want to use it. So we can say, for example, that those first uh, three elements will pick the first coordinate for themselves. Uh, and we will, we will put the first coordinate of the rest arbitrarily. So the first vertex is choosing three, the second is choosing one, and the third is choosing again three. So uh, we have preserved all the information from the left part in the right part, and in addition to that, we have encoded three additional choices with three options per each choice. So um, when we are using this recursive schema, I mean, we are starting from, uh, let's say, k uh, trivial one element permutations, and we are merging them recursively. Then on each level of this recursion, we are encoding a constant fraction of, of k uh, additional pieces of information, and we, and we have uh, we have a logarithmic uh, number of levels of this recursion. So if we have k elements, 
we can encode k log k asymptotically uh, pieces of uh, of information. So if we want, for example, to encode uh, n bits, it is sufficient to take uh, big O of n divided by log n elements and take permutations on them. So this is the general idea behind this compression here. All the rest is just gadgeting, and we are ending up with this uh, beautiful instance of channel assignment. This instance has um, n divided by log n uh, vertices asymptotically. So we are obtaining a tight lower bound for the channel assignment problem and additional lower bound for the L-bounded version. Uh, but we, we do not know whether it is tight or not. Um, so now we can move with this technique to subgraph isomorphism. Subgraph isomorphism is, uh, is a problem where we are asking whether graph G is a subgraph of graph H. What can be our, our most, more, most basic uh, approach to tackle such a, such a problem? Oh, maybe, sorry, not this side. So um, the best known algorithm is, uh, uh, is a brute force. Let, let us assume for the simplicity that both graphs have n vertices. So uh, the best known is brute force checking all the, all the permutations, actually, all the, all the assignments. Uh, and the question was whether it can be solved in C to the N. And the answer is uh, no, it cannot. So how we can tackle such a problem? We can start from taking, let's say, variables of our uh, SAT formula and packing them in, into packs of logarithmic size and assigning those packs to the vertices of the graph G. We can, we can then uh, consider, consider vertices of the graph H as valuations of those packs. And uh, if we have a mapping such that, for example, this vertex is coming to, uh, to this valuation, then, then it stands for that x4, x4 is equal to 0, x5 is equal to 1, and x6 is equal to 0. What is the problem, uh, the most basic problem with, with this approach? The problem is that uh, we may want to reuse the same, the same vertex of H many times. We may want to reuse, uh, reuse some valuation uh, multiple times. Uh, but uh, w what, we can, what, what we can use here? We can use permutations of those vertices because per permutations are legal functions from here to here. And in fact, in, if you use the same uh, recursive schema to, to, to say, uh, which vertex is choosing uh, the assignment for, for which value, then we will obtain, using the same, the same schema as for the channel assignment, we will obtain the division um, of, in, of the variables into packs of different sizes, but the size of the pack will be limited by, uh, by a logarithm. Uh, and, and then for, for each evaluation of all the variables, there will exist a permutation such that, uh, such that uh, for this, this permutation will stand for this, this, this valuation. So, so we'll have a permutation for, for everything. Um, but we are, we are getting, we are getting here uh, different packs of different sizes. Okay. Uh, one of the other problems we can, we can occur, uh, it, one of the other problems that can occur during this approach is problem of configs because, for example, if we if we put one uh, pack of variables to some assignment, then maybe maybe we cannot put some another pack of variables of variables to some other assignment. So we have conflicts between between those assignments, and uh, we need to to capture those conflicts somehow in our instance. So we can modify slightly a problem and add colors for each kind of, of conflict. And we can start from most, the most naive approach. So each conflict between each pair is a different color here, yeah, because we, we have only n divided by log n vertices. And we are saying what, if, where we can put such a pair and where it is impossible. But it is way, way too, too, too large number of colors. Um, after thinking a little bit, we are, we are discovering that conflicts are connected to the variables, so we can have only one type of, of conflict per, per one variable. But if we digest it a little bit more and we take a look on the structure of, of uh, permutation encoding itself, and we, if we are a little bit more careful with, with this, then we can, we can um, force the number 
of colors to be only uh, logarithmic. So we can use only a logarithmic number of colors. It's, it's related to the position of, uh, of the variable inside of a pack. Right? So, so, so many variables will, will, will share the same color of conflict, but they will be on the, on the same position, in, but in the different packs. So, so, so this is tightly related to, 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 this, to this packing uh, of variables uh, into packs of logarithmic sites. Uh, and, but finally, if we have only this number of colors, then we can get back to our original problem by, by, by some gadgeting. And if, if we have only n divided by log n vertices, then we can multiply the number of vertices by a square root of the number of colors, so square root of log n and uh, get, get the, the number of vertices of a new graph without colors on the, on the edges. So we are getting a graph with n divided by square root of log n uh, vertices. And this already gives us uh, a lower bound for subgraph isomorphies. We know from this that subgraph isomorphies cannot be solved in time two to the n times square root of log n under, under ETH. Okay, so, so it, this was cool, but we, we have used a sophisticated way of compressing in permutations and we, we moreover, uh, we were very careful during, during this packing to, to avoid too many kinds of conflicts, so it, it, was, it was quite complex. It can be done much, much simpler. So what was the problem with our, uh, with our first naive approach of packing? The problem was that maybe this vertex is needed two times, and we cannot afford it in, in, in subgraph isomorphism because we can use on this only once. But what if we knew that this, is, this one is needed two times? This, this is needed zero, this is needed one, this is needed one, uh, one time. Uh, if, we, if we knew that, then we can just copy those vertices that many times, so this one is copied twice, and we have we have a perfect instance of of uh, subgraph isomorphism now, so so maybe it is sufficient sufficient to iterate through all the possibilities of of the number of times how how many times we are using each each vertex, and um, and just create another instance for such each such such a possibility. So uh, what is the number of those possibilities? It is single exponential because it is a problem of uh, balls and beans. We have, we have k balls. Those balls are the vertices of, of, the graph, uh, of the graph G. And we have L labeled beans. They are different. They are uh, the vertices of the graph H. And we are asking um, how, how, many, how many times each, each vertex of the graph H is used. So how many balls is going into that bean. So this is, this, is, this is a single exponential ex expression. And our number of the vertices was n divided by log n. So there is only two to the n divided by log n ways of, of dividing this number of, of the vertices of the graph uh, G uh, for, for, for L label beans, for the beans representing the vertices of, of, of the graph H. So we have obtained the same lower bound but in easier way. Instead of one complex reduction, uh, of a one-to-one -one reduction, we are obtaining a, a, a reduction of the form one-to-many, but, but uh, still providing the same, the same lower bound in, in uh, an easier way. So what we did, we, we have allowed uh, by, by, those, by, by, this re by this reduction one-to-many, we, we have allowed uh, one vertex of the graph H to be used multiple times. So in fact, it is uh, just a reduction one to many from graph homomorphism to subgraph isomorphism. Subgraph isomorphism uh, is, uh, is, is a problem where, when, where we can use uh, one vertex of graph uh, H multiple times. So, so if, it is, if it is a reduction, then we can translate using this reduction Results, the recent results uh, for graph homomorphism, the recent lower bounds for graph homomorphism, 
two uh, lower bounds for subgraph isomorphism. And in such a way, using a tight lower bound for graph homomorphism, we can, we can apply this reduction and obtain a tight lower bound for subgraph isomorphism. Okay. And moreover, after all of that, we can get back to the channel assignment and we can replace uh, the encoding in permutation uh, by this, uh, this kind of reduction one to many. And in this case, we are getting uh, compression step almost for free. The, the cost is in, in taking many, many different instances in, instead of, of one instance. Uh, and the rest of reduction is working the same. So, so now the reduction is, 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 is facing. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, do you know about what channel assignment holds when you assume things like the triangle inequality? Uh, if you assume triangle inequality, it is exactly the same as um, as traveling salesman project or problem or something. Uh, I, I was thinking on it, but Lukas, what, what it was exactly? But TSP? The, the, the problem is not that well motivated. It yeah, it, it's, it's not. Kind of. Uh, the opposite of uh, triangle inequality. Yes? That's just a way of avoiding the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, we were thinking uh, on it, and it. Yeah, the problem reduced uh, to uh, TSP. Yeah, it, it was exactly TSP, I think. Those two problems were the same in in this setting. And there was a bit quick on that slide. The bar was n log log l. Uh, you have yes. Yes. Uh, you mean for the unbounded version? Yeah. Um, exactly. I didn't quite catch that. Uh, yeah. It is n times log log l. So, for example, such an algorithm is possible, right? For now, we have we have square root here, but maybe logarithm is possible also. Okay, then let's uh, thank the speaker again. Okay.